Good morning. We welcome all who are joining us from your home. We are pleased that you are with us in spirit. We respectfully ask that all cell phones be silenced. Today, we are celebrating the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I am Audrey Wilson. Our second lector is Joe Tufo, and our leader of song is Mary Beth Haberstick. The deacon of the mass is Deacon Mace Mazzoni. Monsignor Michael McCormack is our principal celebrant. At this mass, there will be a second collection for the Peters Pence collection. In support of the veterans living at Delaware Valley Veterans Home, the Knights of Columbus are sponsoring a collection drive. The collection boxes are located in the vestibule and also on the Blessed Mother's side of the church. Please see the parish bulletin for more information. Camp Cabrini will be held this coming week, Monday through Friday, from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Please register online or complete a paper registration at the rectory. Volunteers are needed. Please call the rectory. Please see the parish bulletin for more information. Our parish school, Holy Family Regional Catholic School, is accepting new registrations for the school year beginning in September. Please see the parish bulletin for more information. Also, there are enrollment flyers at the doors of the church. This week's Pot of Gold Jackpot Prize is $20,000. Tickets are available in the vestibule of the church and also at the rectory. As we prepare for Mass, the prayer for priestly vocations can be found on the inside cover of the Blue Prayer Book. Please stand. And let us pray, Father, in your plan for salvation, you provide shepherds for your people. Fill your church with the spirit of courage and love. Raise up worthy ministers for your altars and ardent but gentle servants of the gospel. Bless our archdiocese with numerous vocations to the sacred priesthood. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, amen. Our entrance hymn is number 548, Glory and Praise to Our God, number 548.
Good morning, everyone. Very special welcome to those who are joining us from their home. And I'd also like to extend a personal warm welcome to the Lynch family who are here with us today. And I would invite our parishioners here and those at home to join me in offering this Mass in addition to your own personal intentions or Mass for Jim Lynch, Mr. Lynch, who entered into eternal life on May 4th of 2020. And we especially want to pray for you, Lorraine, Mrs. Lynch, and your family. I'm sure that you all miss Jim very, very, very much. And so we pray for you and all your family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. 
Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shut within doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands, when I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its doors and said, Thus far shall you come, but no further, and here shall your proud waves be stilled. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all. Therefore, all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on we regard no one according to the flesh, even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat, so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet. Be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Although the disciples were experienced fishermen, and although they knew that storms could appear very suddenly on the Sea of Galilee, on that particular day they were frightened, very frightened, believing that they were going to die, going to drown. And although the disciples had been with Jesus, for a long period of time, heard his teachings, 
observed the miracles, the healings, heard about how important faith is on that particular day, they were lacking in faith. Even to the point of accusing Jesus of not caring about them and their well-being. Jesus sees the opportunity to turn it into a teachable moment. Not only for them, but for all of us. Every one of us, with the exception of perhaps the littlest of children here, know that there are certain storms that come into our lives that can overwhelm us. In that boat, the disciples rightfully were scared. The storm was raging, so we cannot be too critical. Here we are in a safe environment here in this church, beautiful day outside, no storm. But there are times when storms do come into our lives. We can be overwhelmed. Life could be good, everything going our way. All of a sudden, a tragedy, a sudden illness, something that's very disturbing and overwhelming, and we think we're lacking in faith. So we have to ask ourselves, what is faith? Many people think that faith is simply praying to God and believing that God is going to answer our prayer exactly the way we want and according to our timetable. And when that doesn't happen, we think we're lacking in faith. When in reality, we have a false understanding of faith. Faith is simply believing that God loves us and he will protect us at all times. It doesn't mean that he's going to remove necessarily the tragedy or the heartache that's occurring, but he will never abandon us. That's faith. And that's why we have to keep a very close relationship with Jesus and allow him to keep that close relationship with us. When I was in grammar school, the late grades, early high school, I played football. I was too small for high school ball. But Crispin Gardens in Northeast Philadelphia, I played for them. And I was a left end, sometimes right end. And I remember the coaches saying to us that when you're in the huddle and the play is called and it's your play and you're running down the field and you know the ball is going to be thrown to you, then you have to run with your arms up expecting the ball. Don't run with your hands at your side. And the same thing is true with regard to our faith. We need expectant faith, believing that Jesus is going to act. He's never going to abandon us and holding on to that, claiming it. Story about Mother Teresa. As she was stepping down from overseeing her worldwide community, that she had found it. Someone from Time Magazine asked her, how did she feel about this? Was she anxious, worried, fearful that she was handing over all this authority to someone? She simply said, it's not my concern, it's his. Unfortunately for the Time correspondent, 
he missed the point. He said, I don't understand. She repeated herself and once again pointed. It's his concern, not mine, because of her faith. She knew what she had established. She knew the good work being done throughout the world. And she knew that Jesus was pleased with all that. And he was not going to allow it to be destroyed. And it hasn't. St. Francis de Sales, in one of his writings, spoke about the need for faith. These were his words. Do not look forward to what may happen tomorrow. The same everlasting Father who cares for you today will take care of you tomorrow and every day. Either he will shield you from suffering or he will give you unfailing strength to bear it. Be at peace then. Put aside all anxious thoughts and imaginations and say continually, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart has trusted in him and I am helped. He is not only with me, but he is in me and I am in him. Pray that we have that type of faith and then to share our faith with those who might be weak and lacking and know that as we do that, our faith will be strengthened. Please stand and let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
brothers and sisters, trusting our loving Father, we give voice to the needs of our church and our society. For a renewed courage on the part of all who lead others, especially the bishops and pastors of the church, that this will bring a new force in the spirit to root out the sin and evil which impede the works of the gospel and Christian lives of virtue. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may God grant them the grace to govern with understanding and the courage to protect the sanctity of all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who battle the storms of addiction, depression, anxiety, may the hope of Christ bring them peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish and visioning team, may the Holy Spirit enlighten their hearts and minds as they continue their work to develop a pastoral, a parish pastoral plan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For fathers everywhere, that they may be blessed with strength, tenderness, and patience as they care for their children and for consolation for all those who are mourning the loss of their fathers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life, especially from among our St. Francis Cabrini Parish. May all who have been called to a vocation in the church respond with courage and generosity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For police officers, firefighters, first responders, military personnel, and those on the front line of the coronavirus pandemic, may they be protected from harm as they strive to serve others, and that all veterans may be blessed with support from a grateful nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the, the sick of our community and all those who requested our prayers, including those reflected in the White Intercessory Book, may they be comforted by the caregiving and compassion of others. We especially pray for Al Caruso, Tom Connor, Thomas Cunningham, Nicholas Carrado, Patrick Galloway, Mark Gravante, Michael Hennessy, John Henry, Tom Holden, John Holland, Holland, J.T. Nuttall, John Lounsbury, Connor Scott Moore, Marcia Mazzoni, Diane Merkel, Mary Rita Merlino, Baby Hannah Renee Moore, Emily Moore, Danica Mulholland, Andrea Richards, Justin, Justin uh, Saunders, Greg Schaefer, Loretta Ward, and Dorothy Yurkovich, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may they come to enjoy the fullness of life and love in the presence of God, as we especially pray for Norbert Blum, Mary Kennedy, and Arline Koble. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also command to the Lord Jim Lynch that he too be received into the kingdom and be at peace forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear our prayers, strengthen our faith, and draw us closer to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 465. Be still and know that I am God, number four, six, five.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death, we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for their forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who were nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis Gabrini, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Nelson our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember Jim, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. From the earth, he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you our God, as you are, we shall become like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. To 
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We invite those who are participating with us from their home and therefore not able to physically receive Holy Communion to please join in praying the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn will be number 320, Gift of Finest Wheat.
Number 320, Gift to Finest Week. On behalf of the Holy Father, I thank you for your support in the second collection for Peter Spence. I'm very grateful for your support of the parish in the first collection. As we said at the beginning of Mass, we're remembering uh, Mr. Jim Lynch at our Mass and the Lynch family is here. I don't want to embarrass him, but I probably will, but numbered among the Lynch uh, family members here is Tom Lynch. Many of you, uh, would know that name, anyone connected with uh, Kamal Egan Catholic High School. He's the president 
And Tom, we want to thank you collectively for all that you do for um, the children in our area and beyond our area at Conwell Egan and also Holy Family Regional Catholic School, our parish school. Uh, so very, very grateful you are transforming Catholic education and uh, we thank you. And I'd like to give a round of applause to you, Tom, and your staff. And I'm very happy to do that in the presence of your mother, because I know she's very, very, very proud of you. And let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. And before the final blessing, we have a special blessing for fathers. I'm going to ask the fathers to remain standing, and I'm going to ask everyone to please be seated. And before the blessing, I did not wake up this morning with this idea, but during the nine o'clock mass, this uh, story came to mind about my own dad. We were on vacation. I was just very young, maybe four or five years of age, and one of seven. And we were in West Wildwood on vacation in August, probably July. And my father decided that he would take the younger ones, myself included, to the beach in the crest and fly some kites. So he dropped us off at the back of the beach with the intention of parking his car and coming back and joining us. Well, I got a little nervous being dropped off like that. And I, I said, Dad, you're not going to forget us. He said, Michael, I will never forget you. Wasn't sure exactly how he meant that. <laughs> then he pointed to the sign of the street. Forget me not street. <laughs> I should have read the sign taking all that anxiety away. Let us pray. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit a profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's give them a round of applause. And again, a happy Father's Day to you and to all the men in our parish. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 442, How Can I Keep From Singing? Number 442. <laughs> 